What's up, YouTube? Angry Jackalope here, Rob Ricks, back again. Uh, this time I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Street Warriors, a game I came up with. Um, I'm going to tell you how it all came about, start off that way. And uh, this is a three-part story. So this is Street Warriors Part 1. So we went through this really hellacious period of time where our first home, we ended up going through a bunch of shit and we sold it and we made a pretty hefty amount of money um, that after that year of hell. And I promised my wife I would take her on a vacation, so we went to Hawaii. Well, before we went on a flight to Hawaii, I wanted to play a game, and I had a, a, a Game Boy Advance. And um, I wanted a game that I could play while I was on a fucking airplane, because I, I didn't want to be fucking bored out of my mind. So I went to the card shop, and I asked them, hey, you guys have a, a, a game that's uh, really popular, really fun, I'd like to, you know, check it out. And they were like, yeah, we've got uh, this game called Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I'm like, okay, what the fuck is a Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? And they're like, oh, it's, it's a fun game. And so I says, okay. So I pick up the game on their recommendation and have it and decide, all right, you know, let's uh, play some Yu-Gi-Oh while we're on the fucking plane. Well, I, I, I pop the game in. I turn it on. There's no fucking tutorials. No nothing. Uh, come to find out this video game was based on a card game. And they made the fatal assumption Anybody in their right mind who was going to play this game had to already be familiar with the card game, which I was not. So I was pissed because I had dropped some money for a fucking game I couldn't play. And I was mad as a motherfucker. So I decided once we landed in Hawaii, I was going to pick up a fucking deck of this fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! Just so I could see how to fucking play this video game that I bought. So... I buy the, I, I go, I, we land and my wife is like, are you seriously going to go to a fucking card shop and fucking buy the game while we're on vacation? I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to waste fucking money. So I go to card shop. I get a pack, a, a couple starter packs of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, during our vacation, me and the wife figure out how to play it and we play it. And lo and behold, it was fucking fun. And I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. So we get back from vacation, and my partner, Mike, is, is in the office. And I'm like, hey, dude, I want to play this with you. I want you to check it out. And he looks at the art, and he sees, like, you know, fucking wizards and some other shit. He's like, yeah, I don't fuck with that. I don't play that shit. And I'm like, dog, it's a fucking fun-ass game. Come play with me. He's like, nah, I'm not going to fucking play it. And I'm like, fuck, all right. And then I got to thinking, I wonder how many motherfuckers are not playing this because they think it's just some fucking fantasy-based shit. So I had this idea. I had this aha fucking moment. I said, dude, what if this shit was based off of action movies, gangs, and things like that? He goes, ooh, I'd fuck with that. I said, all right, listen. I need you to sit down and fucking play this with me and not say shit, but just fucking play it. So he sits down and I explain the shit to him and we play. And he's like, hey, that's actually pretty fun. It's got a lot of... Um, it's got a lot of uh, strategy in it, and you have to read and do some comprehension. He's like, this is really fun. And uh, he went and talked to his uh, son about it, and his son had, had been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! already. So he was pretty surprised, and we did some demographic information, and we did some due diligence and research. And I said, dude, I want to make a fucking street version of some shit like this. And he's like, all right. So we sit down, and I start figuring stuff out, and... Him and my wife start helping me with some of the character names and some of the some of the descriptors and stuff like that, and uh, you know the the went back and forth quite a few times and finally decided yeah we're gonna call this fucking thing the the Street Warriors, and uh, you know it uh, it turned out amazingly good, um, and I figured what I I would do is. I would show you some of the cards and explain roughly what each of these cards are. Um, I had, I used to have sheets where, uh, there we go. You can go like this, I guess. All right, so we made some differences. It wasn't exact copy of Yu-Gi-Oh. In fact, uh, I created other variations of gameplay mechanics so that you could win the game, uh, lose the game, win the game, whatever. So, you know, you start off with what's called a boss card, okay? 
And so this one is Sean Justice. Um, all of the boss cards are foil. Then you've got actual playing cards, player cards, I should say. And each one has levels on here. Levels one, level two, level three, and level four. So level one cards, all the odd cards have some kind of special ability or reveal effect. And we'll get into all of that stuff at another time. I'm just kind of giving you a quick overview. The even cards, levels two and four, are physically stronger cards, but don't have any kind of an effect on them, special or reveal. So level three again, here's this odd card, so there's a special ability down on the bottom. And then finally, a level four card, which is, you know, a heavy hitting, you know, behemoth card. So there's those, and then there's equipment, such as a Desert Eagle. And you could tell it's equipment because it's got this green. You can spot equipment card relatively easy. They all have this green look and feel to it and some kind of a, an item on it, right? And then we had the real fun stuff, which is called the Murphy Law cards. So this card, for example, is called Kiss My Ass. And uh, let's see. You got jacked. And these are pretty distinctive too because they say Murphy's Law and there's just some text on there that says what happens. So for example, Kiss My Ass, when this card is activated, you can send an attack of a character back to him or her or take the effect of a character or Murphy's Law card and send it back to your opponent. So this is basically like a reverse card. So somebody does something like attack me or they do something like use a Murphy Law card on me or whatever, I can say Kiss My Ass and it would go back and forth. In fact, one of the fucking funny things was there was one game I saw these players playing. Dudes threw down kiss my ass. The other guy threw down a kiss my ass. This guy threw down a kiss my ass. This dude threw a kiss my ass. And this guy said, no, motherfucker, kiss my ass. And it was fucking awesome because it went back and forth, back and forth until finally went back to that guy. So um, that's kind of the quick overview of the cards, how they look. And, you know, every set also has, you know, there was in addition to the regular player cards, each of the sets had a foil random card that was in there as well. And those were the, you know, usually what you would end up getting inside of a box here. It was a random set and you could actually start playing right out of the box and get going. And then, you know, there was a, a little rule book that was just a sheet that showed all the stuff. So. You know, it showed what the objectives were, showed the different types of cards, you know, had some example of how the game played. And, you know, that was, uh, that was it, you know. And it was uh, over 3,000 hours. I spent 3,000 hours developing this game. I did all of the art. I did all of the layout. I did all of the packaging designs. I did all of the websites. Um, etc. Now, that's that's the quick overview. So let's continue the story. Now, I had these sheets of cards that we did, and I just basically grabbed some art off the internet, grabbed some art off the internet, and put them on cards. And we cut them out. And we played with them, and we did a whole bunch of play testing just to make sure that we had the flow down. And then when we did, we were like, "Fuck, we're gonna need some money." Well. Uh, Mike reached out to some of his friends and one of his friends said, hey, we got a guy that might be able to throw some money to you, to you and his name is uh, Chris the Millionaire is what we call him. And um, we were like, okay, cool. So we uh, went down to do this presentation for this guy and lo and behold, this dude was a up and coming hedge fund uh, guy for this company in San Francisco. And I remember we're going up the fucking elevator. We open up this elevator, and it's just plush. I mean, it is the receptionist desk probably cost more than one of my cars. I mean, it was just lavish, just fucking amazing. And so we walk in. We're like, yeah, we're here to see Chris such and such. And they're like, okay. So we meet with him, and he's like, okay, you guys have 15 minutes or some shit like that. And so I just start talking. 
boom, 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 boom. And by the time I'm done, an hour and a half had gone by, and this dude is just laughing at me. And he's like, so you guys came to a hedge fund to try to get money? We didn't know anything. We're like, I heard you're a Chris the Millionaire, so we came to ask you if you wanted to get down. And so he said, yeah, I'm interested. He goes, I'll introduce you to a bunch of my friends, and uh, we'll see if we can get you enough money to get things going. Okay, so I was like, okay. So he had us go out to Vegas, I guess. I forgot where we went. We went somewhere and we met up with these guys. And they said, well, how, how many of these cards do you have done? And I said, none. We just have prototypes. I don't even have anything. And they're like, all right, well, by August, no. By a certain time, you think you can have all the cards done? I said, sure. And it was something like uh, six months away. Uh, I said, yeah, I think I can get them all done. I think I can get them all done. And they were like, okay, fine. So um, we part ways. We have all the agreements in place. Okay, fine. If you can get a complete set, we're all interested. We'll all come, we'll all come on board. I said, great. So I'm sitting there and uh, I decide, fuck it, we're, you know, we're leaving Oakland, we're over in Utah, and I tell my wife I have to get these things done by a certain time. And so two months before we're, one month actually, before we're supposed to um, meet with these guys, my wife asked me, hey, how many cards you got done? I said, uh, I got six cards done. She goes, how many cards do you have to have done? I said, I have to have like 50 cards done, or no, not 50 cards, uh, fuck, I don't even remember how many are in the set now. It was, it was a fucking big ass number though. And she said, fuck, are you going to be able to get it done? I'm like, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it done. Not here with all the distractions going on and everything else. She said, why don't you go to your mom's house, take your machines with you and just crank away. So I went to my mom's house and I spent a month, a solid fucking month. And I sacrificed a lot. I missed my son's first laugh. I missed a bunch of different things. Uh, but at the end of that month, I had everything done. I mean, I was rendering and working all night. All I'd fall asleep there and I had them all done. I had them all designed and finished. So when I, I uh, reached out and scheduled the next appointment with the investors, they were like, uh, you got them done? I'm like, I fucking got them done. And they're like, okay, we'd like to see them. So, that's where I'm going to end this one because each one of these has more and more stuff. But um, I have a friend of mine in Idaho. Uh, he is the only person besides me that actually has these. And uh, uh, he opened up a new shop. And so I said, dude, tell you what, I'm just going to push traffic towards you. And, you know, if anybody's interested in this fucking game, I'll tell them they have to go through you. Uh, I have some here I'll be doing giveaways from time to time with them but um, excuse me I got a zip there I know it's gross not professional at all but fuck whatever we're homies at this point um, but yeah his information is going to be in the description below and um, show him some love if you're interested in picking up some of these he's he's got boxes of it so um, and that that'll help a buddy of mine you know get his shop up off off the ground and stuff like that and it's in Idaho. So if you guys happen to be in Idaho, you can also check him out. All right. So that's it for this episode. Hope you like it. If you like it, like it, please subscribe. Tell all your friends. Until next time.